My name is Rick Pasek, the Fly Fish Fanatic. Welcome to my tying bench. Uh, today we're going to go with an older pattern again. Um, I quite like all these older patterns from uh, from Europe, um, especially from the UK. There's some pretty cool old patterns. Um, I'll be doing the Alexandria probably next week, which is a 400 year old pattern. This one's pretty old too. Um, this one is the Cormorant. Now this is my variation of the Cormorant. I'll put that down here, maybe you can see better. So this one here, I've got, uh, I just used some hollow tinsel as the as the cheeks here. Um, so that's one version. Um, you can do it in with red if you want. You can do it with green, you can do it with all kinds of stuff. So there's all kinds of ways of of tying these, these cormorants. Um, I like it with the straggle legs. I'm using the straggle legs on it. You can use dubbing, you can use peacock. There's, I mean, there's many different things. So this is a variant of it. Um, so let's uh, let's get on with it. Um, today, um, all the materials that I'm using can be bought uh, through Hatchmatcher uh, out of Maple Ridge. Uh, if you go look on uh, the end of this video, there's the Hatchmatcher website. Use the uh, code FANATIC and you'll get 10% off. So. Um, Today I'll be using a Mustad size 12 streamer hook. That's just what I have. I really like the uh, the straight eye for the for this uh, fly. I mean, you can do it with any, but um, for the body, I'm using the micro straggle uh, uh, straggle string micro chenille. Uh, it's got the shorter the shorter legs than the uh, micro than the than the straggle string does. Um, for this one, I'm going to be using silver holographic uh, for the underbody. Uh, there's the straggle string for the body and uh, I'll be using some marabou in black in this case it's hens but uh, any other marabou that uh, good quality marabou will do you want a good quality marabou for this for this overwing and then for the uh, for the gills or the hot spot today I'm going to use some uh, some of this lateral scale uh, I'm just cut in, 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 in the shape and size that I want um, I've used um, the red holographic in a medium or in a large for underbody and for the scale that's what uh, for the cheek sorry that's what uh, that's what this one is it's got the the little red cheek there and I got a little bit of an underbody in red it's kind of hard to see on the camera um, but so you can just experiment uh, use use all the colors you can and for uh, for my tyings today I'll be using the Zemperfly Nano Silk in a 12 watt so as always with the Ooh, of course you drop the uh, wax, uh, whatever, uh, use my other wax, just wax your thread, start your uh, tying thread at the front, I just want to put a, a nice base down, all the way to the back, I want to stop just past the tip of the, the hook, like past the, the point, just past. Don't want to go to the bend or anything like that. So, as always, last thing to be turned uh, on is first thing off, right? Uh, first, first thing, uh, sorry, first thing to be wound is the last thing on. So, this is going to be wound second, so it goes on first. I'll eventually get it. <laughs> uh, and now I'm going to put on for my underbody. So that's going to be the silver holographic. So I'm just going to put a little piece on. I'm just going to tie it in on the side here. So hold on, let me actually grab that properly. So, and then just put a nice thread base down. Again, doesn't have to be touching wraps or anything like that. It's going to be all covered. So, and you want to stop about there you want to leave yourself just a little bit of room for a head up here for when you're tying in the marabou just do a half hitch just tying that in so now you take your flash material whatever you want to use for an underbody i like this uh this silver holographic or any actually any of the holographics i find they really shine through um, especially once this uh marabou wing is wet you can really see this through it because uh you'll we're gonna we're not going to have touching wraps of the micro chenille. We're going to almost uh, do like a hackle. I'm going to leave room so we can see that uh, that silver coming through underneath. 
So we'll just tie that off. Nip off your excess there. Oh, that slipped on me a little bit. Let's see, is the focus still pretty good? Yeah, that's not too bad. I could probably just tweak it for you guys a little bit. There we go. So now I'm going to take my straggle. And like I said, I'm just going to nice and wide. I just want to a little bit here and a little bit there of the straggle legs, but I want that silver to show through, almost like a rib, right? So right up to there, lock it in. Three times behind, a couple times in front, just to make sure it's locked. Nip off your excess. Just stroke it back, just put a little bit of a bed down of thread for your, your marabou. And that's all I want. I don't want much in the way of of, uh, of the straggle. Um, even that's almost too much, but it's not. It'll do. So now I'm going to take a piece of my, my marabou. I really like this hen's marabou. It's really good stuff, but uh, there's so many good marabous out there. Um, don't cheap out on your marabou. Um, it, uh, you definitely want something that's going to have really nice movement. And not too much of that under fur stuff. Um, so I'm just peeling it, folding it, peeling it, folding it off of one side of the uh, the quill. And folding it until I get about how much I want. So there you can see that's how much I took out of the quill. Okay. So now I'm going to stroke it all together. I'm going to wet my fingers. Just a little bit. Quite often I'll have a, if I'm doing a lot, I'll have a little cup of water here just to moisten my fingers. And then I'm just going to clean up these ends where my tie-in point's going to be. So I've just cleaned that all up. Okay, now I'm just going to pick out if there's any under fluff and stuff. All right, it doesn't have a lot, but it's just to, so the, so your, uh, tie-in isn't too bulky so I'm going to make that end wet as well before I tie that in so now I'm just going to even that out again because when I pulled out it so I'm just going to lay that on right about there Ooh, keep missing it there we go okay there we go so nice get that tied in you don't want to build too big of a head here Make sure I didn't fold it over on either side. No, that looks good because you want this right, pretty well right on top. So now I'm just going to just make sure it's nice and tight in there so I don't pull anything out when I do my next step here. So next step is, I obviously, I don't want my tail that long. So I'm going to, I want it a little bit longer than the, the length of the shaft. So I'm going to come out about an, three quarters of an inch or so past. And I'm just going to tweak it off there maybe a half an inch past the hook so I'm just going to pinch that off now again just give it a little bit of a wet so it just so it looks better for now while you're tying and so you're you know when you're tying it in just for control so now <clears throat> taking a piece of this lateral scale and again you can use pretty well anything you want here you can use um, any kind of the, the, the stretchy flosses anything like you do on buzzers you can whatever um, so in this case this is a nice wide piece so I'm just gonna cut I can either cut a little bit off of both sides like I can leave it like this or I can cut it into a point um, I mean you can even leave this um, you can even leave this flat if you wanted right uh, like a square so now I'm just gonna lay this right along the side I'm gonna lay it in a little long like if you can see that that's a quite a bit longer than I'm gonna want but I'm just gonna leave it long just for now then I'm going to get a couple of loose-ish wraps in. Make sure that stays right on the side. Tighten a little of my wraps just a little bit. And now I'm just going to pull back to where I want this. And sometimes it'll do exactly what it just did there and it kind of pull off to the side. That's fine. So that's about what I want, right about there. Okay, so I'm going to put another, just a nice tight wrap right there so it doesn't... Uh, Move on me, I'm gonna nip that off.
Okay, same thing here. I'm going to do the same thing again. Cut a bit of a, a point. Like I said, this is personal preference, whether you like a point or a blunt end or a or one side only. So it's all just personal preference. Now I'm going to just turn this. I'm going to turn this my way. Uh, unfortunately, you guys aren't going to be able to see the exact tie-in, but I'll stop during the tie and show you guys where I'm tying it in. But just so I can see where I'm laying it, and I'm going to compare it roughly to the other side. That's about right lengthwise. So I'm going to go a little bit longer and hold it in on the side, and then I'm just going to catch it in two, three turns. Let's see. That is looking pretty darn close. And might be just a tad, a tad long. So let's just pull this back just a tad. Make sure when you're pulling, you're pulling in the right direction. Otherwise, you're going to pull it facing down or facing, you know, the way you don't want it. So another two, three, four wraps. And I'm going to just get in here and cut off this piece. Gonna build just a little bit of a head here. Let's see how that's looking on there. That's not too bad. Man, why does this focus keep going out? I keep bumping it, I guess. So that's not looking too, too bad right there. So now I'm just gonna give myself a three, four turn whip finish. This nano silk's nice and strong, so you can give it a really good tug. Push your push your scissors through. Nano silk doesn't like getting cut. So I'm gonna just lick this again just a little bit, just wet it. Just to get that nice and wet. Now I'm gonna take my golf. Uh, in this case, it's the uh, Thin Min. Uh, you can use the other one as well, the thicker stuff. But <clears throat> I'm just gonna give myself a little bit of a dab here my bodkin and i'm just going to put this not only on the head but on the start of that lateral scale just to help you can even put it all the way on if you're careful very careful not to get it on your marabou you don't want your marabou to get all stiff right from having this on it so trying very hard not to get it on your marabou um you can put it on your uh on your head and on your uh, hot spot here that's not a problem so there now a little trick because you can see that when I've put that on it's actually right into the right into the eye so just take a old marabou feather stick it in the eye and pull through that cleans it up and now you can zap it with your your light so that just cleans up what's in your eye you could go either way obviously so <clears throat> so I want to give a good dry on that uh, on that lateral scale, that hot spot. Let's see if it's not. Yeah, okay, it's not too bad there. It's a little bit of tiny bit of marabou kind of got caught on that, so I just wanted to get that off. So there, I'll do another coat later on. But uh, that is your finished fly. The only reason I really put any of the uh, the uh, UV resin onto those uh, that lateral scale is just so it doesn't get torn off. Plus, it does actually give it a bit more of a shine, more of a pop. Um, yeah, so you don't have to put it onto the lateral scale. You can put that. Uh, you can definitely put that just on the head and just leave the lateral scale like it was. Um, but uh, it's just used to, as an attractor anyway. So. But yeah, there's your uh, your finished cormorant. This is a, a, like I said, this is a variant of the cormorant. There's so many different styles of cormorant out there. Um, but uh, it's been a very, very successful uh, a fly uh, internationally. Um, it's, like I said, developed over in, in Europe. Um, it's a very well-known fly in competitions. Um, and I know they work really well here. Um, I've used them uh, for quite a few years now, and they are extremely successful. 
So, um, like I said, try these with some dubbing, try them with peacock curl, try it with uh, all kinds of different bodies. And marabou is my favorite, but uh, they also can get tied with, uh, you take a rabbit, take the, uh, uh, the zonker strips and cut the uh, hair off and use a, uh, use a, um, uh, like a Petajon tool, a magic tool or something like that to put that into a dubbing loop. Uh, that works really well. Uh, not to a dubbing loop, sorry, just to, you don't use the Petajon tool, sorry, that's if you want to do the body. Um, but just to do the overwing, you just take the, um, nip it off if you've got long enough fibers, right? You need, you need a long enough fiber. So if you're doing like a size uh, 8 or 10, you're probably not going to be able to. You'll have to go to a Marabou or another um uh, well moving uh, uh, product uh, maybe even CDC if you want uh, the problem with CDC it does uh, um, shed water a little bit um, you can use uh, like I said the, the rabbits uh, off the zonkers and stuff like that on the smaller ones like the, the 14s and the 16s um, I tie these primarily in 10s and 12s so um, and this is a uh, uh, like I said this is a streamer hook so it is a bit longer as well so so that's the finished fly uh, like I said, I hope you enjoyed that. Um, go over to Hatchmatcher, and uh, uh, like I said, they're out of Maple Ridge. Just go into their online store, use the code FANATIC, um, and you'll get a 10% off your order. Um, and they've got all this material. Um, yeah, go give her a try. And, uh, well, tight lines. Have a good one. <laughs>